Hello, my name is Eli Davis, and I will be going over the Unity extension Record and Play and the different features you get when you download it from the Unity Asset Store. Um, so it's in the name. You just record stuff, and then you can play it back. Um, so we'll go through the demo that's provided in the extension when you download it. Um, you notice there's a Start Recording thing, and I'm not going to click it yet because I'll explain a few things. Um, you set up a scene and you're going to set up these game objects with uh, scene uh, subject behaviors attached to them. And these subject behaviors um, will record the rotation and position of the game objects you find important. And you record them at certain frame rates. So you can actually set such as like your player to be recorded at a higher frame rate than other um, objects that you care less about. So you can adjust the accuracy towards what you find important, so you're not building these cumbersome, large uh, recording files. You're only recording what you need. On top of that, Record and Play will be very efficient with only storing what needs to be stored. So if your player's sitting still for 30 seconds, you're not gonna, and you set it to record for 60 frames a second, it's only gonna store two frames over those 30 seconds because he's been standing still. And the same goes for running in a straight line. There's no reason for capturing all this extra data when it's just a basic straight line. So we'll start a recording and you'll notice that there's these subject behaviors attached and the frame rates we talked about. Um, and there's extra information for um, like uh, determining the accuracy of the recording that you can go into more depth when you look into the documentation. Now I've started this recording. I've been recording nothing for a while, so I'm gonna restart it but uh, start a new one. I can go and just do stuff. It's pretty pretty basic just to get the uh, point across, knock stuff off the platform, and then I can say finish, and then I can say uh, start the playback. And with that, you might notice these particle emitters happening. So what I did in the recording is I actually logged custom events on the collision. So you can add all these custom events while you're recording. It, these custom events can be specific to a subject, so a single cube, or it can be a global custom event that everyone can look at. Um, use these custom events uh, for either analytic purposes or building more custom playbacks so you can do all this special stuff in the end, um, like you see here. So you've got all this custom playback data and there's a few features you can do. You can pause playback, pretty simple. Um, you can stop a playback and it would delete everything. I can, let's start it again. I can adjust the playback speed and I can even have it go in reverse. Uh, reminds me of the matrix or whatnot. Or you can have it go super fast. So it's all, you know, very, very basic controls, but very powerful. You can seek through it. You don't have to rely on you know this playback speed. You can pause it and just set it wherever you need it. So you can build these custom event handlers that you pass to the playback software. The playback software will call these custom event handlers when those events occur. You also may notice that the cubes don't look the same. That's because you can pass to the recording or the playback software um, code to be called to build the actor representations of what was recorded. So you are not bound by what was recorded at all for playback. You can make it super custom and do exactly what you want. So also what you can do is save these um, recordings to your assets. So you look and then we have this asset of our recording and you also notice this metadata. So you can have metadata associated with both the subjects in the scene, so you could on a per cube basis, or you can associate it with uh, the recording itself. So I was keeping up with the amount of boxes I knocked off the platform. Um, so you can save it to your assets. You won't really be wanting to do this inside a game per se. Really, you would want to be saving it to like a binary. And so I've supplied this uh, this wrap format, which utilizes protobuf and the deflate compression algorithm to get really small binaries. Um, so that's what you'll be using for saving to disk or transport, but what you can use this 
saving to assets for is like let's say you build a tutorial for your player and you you want to like record you know you the game developer playing through your one of your uh levels as a tutorial to show the player so you record yourself and then you can use that asset to play back inside the game so it ships with the game you know you can have predefined recordings or whatnot so that's what that can be used for um notice there's also this view playback um button which will pull up a playback window and i'll go to a new scene so you can see it and notice you don't even have to be in play mode to play it i can just hit play and it will go and play back what i just recorded um you will notice everything's a cube that's because no um actor actor builder code has been supplied to this it's and when that happens it just builds a cube i could go back and actually set custom actors per actor but i'm not going to do this for the sake of time um and so yeah i mean later earlier i mentioned protobuf and so when you buy this extension or download this extension you will be provided a protobuf file the protobuf file will look something or exactly like this and so kind of what i'm trying to get across is you can make your recordings inside your game but you can use any language to analyze them so you can use json or csv you can export to json or csv very basic but it's going to be re really large the export um file so it's not ideal for transportation but it is there if you want like a laid back kind of just oh i'm going to load it into r or whatnot you know some just language that you don't really care about too much you're just browsing but if, if you care about efficiency or whatnot you can export this as protobuf there is code examples at, um, for you to export it as a dot proto or not that not as a dot proto but you know the binary that is the protobuf representation so this is the dot proto and so let's say i am in c sharp land but that's only in my game but i have java servers that are you know running my mmo and i'm going to be sending the recordings to this and i'm not going to just write more c sharp code to do interpretation of the recording and then back to java and all this random stuff i can just straight up generate my java code by typing product java out recording dot proto and anyone who knows part about knows what's happening but for the sake of example of those who don't um this just generated this huge file that is the representation of the recording and all the supporting classes like the perf subject recording all the different event data and whatnot and you get um not only the representation of these classes, but the code for loading in the binary, or if you want to write back to the binary, um, and all this other extra stuff you get with Protobuf. So this is just a quick overview of everything you get when you download the extension. I hope you enjoy it. Please contact me. Uh, my email is listed in the documentation if you have any problems. Thanks for watching.